today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. That's a massive topic, but we're going to try to tackle it. So let's get started. You are watching the Beyond Sunday podcast. So, mm. I'm going to ask you a big question. And then I'll ask it back to you back. <laughs> back to you back. Okay. What do you think of when you think of the Holy Spirit? Well, so for me, I'm going to talk about my Mac, my upbringing a little okay. bit. Okay. And then I want to hear about your upbringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of our our paradigms that we kind of grew up under. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that kind of has informed... A lot of people. My understanding of who the Holy Spirit yeah. is. And everybody kind of maybe has different experiences about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I grew up in a church um, where we talked about the Holy Spirit. There was not a lot of, probably not not a lot of emphasis put on. Like, I knew there was a Holy Spirit, but that's probably about it. Uh, I knew there were spiritual gifts. Um was there big time charismatic healings and an anointings and miracles? Definitely not. Not in my church experience. Um, and I think I would not say that the church I grew up in was cessationist, meaning like that they believe that That's the Holy word. Spirit. I'm going to explain what that means. <laughs> okay, I would say that. I don't know what it means. <laughs> that the, the church was not under the belief that the, the Holy Spirit had stopped his actions um, that you could see in the Bible, you know, in the modern day world, mm-hmm. they wouldn't say that, but I don't think that we, had, that we were along the lines of, of kind of jumping in that fully either. So it was a little bit of, it was like, we know about them, but there's not a lot of, besides just talking about them on Pentecost or yeah. <laughs> something like that. It was not a or baptism. Yeah. Father, son, son and the Holy, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. That was my church experience. Not not a lot of emphasis on the Holy Spirit. How about you? Yeah, mine is like exactly the same. Okay, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it sounds super similar. I I knew who the Holy Spirit was, but I like didn't know. I didn't know what he did. What he did? I don't know. Like I didn't know. Like it was just a part of the Trinity, and that's basically what I. You knew, knew his name. I knew that. Like <laughs> I I didn't know anything. Yeah. And I don't know if I just wasn't taught or if I just didn't remember. <laughs> I don't know. But until college, until college, I really had no interaction. Then what happened? What Holy was different Spirit. at college? So then in college, I went to this weekend retreat. And it was the first time where there was like an actual teaching on the Holy Spirit. And like, I feel like I had a experience with the holy spirit and Mm -hmm. i felt the holy spirit's presence and like that part of it that part of my soul was awakened yeah (laughs) i don't know if that's the right word but and then since then it's been like a journey of just learning more and more but like that was the first time where it was like whoa what is this Mm. (laughs) i didn't even know this was a thing (laughs) (laughs) and then like after that like man that just like changed my like that just took me leaps and bounds in my faith yeah that's exciting yeah that's cool so yeah i think um our experiences kind of play a major role in helping us or how good or bad to know about the holy spirit um when do you get the Holy Spirit? So the way the, I know it depends on like yeah. theology. I know there's a lot of things, but so for what we're talking about, what today, we're talking about today, the Holy Spirit comes to a believer in the moment that they receive Christ as their Savior. Mm-hmm. Like I agree, there's not a there's not a special add on. You're not gonna like it a fire above your head or a halo. Yeah, or <laughs> uh, he, wind and lightning. He's part of what comes into you when you receive yeah. Jesus as your Savior mm-hmm. and your Lord. And mm-hmm. you receive the Holy Spirit. Now, maybe you don't understand and can't really, you know, you haven't really understood all of, of 
his power and how he works in our lives. Right. And so there's a growing part of that. But There's like a muscle you have to strengthen. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's not there. Absolutely. And it's not just reserved for super Christians or like, right. you know. The people. There's not a special thing that you have to be able to do to know that you have the Holy Spirit. No. He's, he's there. It's just walking deeper mm-hmm. and deeper in step with him as as you walk and grow in your faith mm-hmm. um but you get the whole package absolutely <laughs> when you're saved you you get all parts of who god all is. parts of who god is that includes the holy spirit i think you just have to plug into that yeah so question fun yes. little trivia question okay where in the where in the first where is in the first place in the bible that, that the holy spirit's mentioned where is it do you know it's in genesis it is it's in the beginning of genesis i can't i don't know any more than that i think that (laughs) hey she's right on track with that yeah it's the second verse of the bible says genesis 1 1 says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth Mm -hmm. and verse 2 says and the spirit of god was hovering over the waters Mm. and so right from the beginning is the spirit and i think a really cool um way that the holy spirit kind of works Mm -hmm. even from that page of the bible throughout all of scripture and then into our lives is that picture there so there's there's chaos Mm -hmm. uh in genesis the world the earth is not formed yet but there's nothing there's nothing it's just chaos but everything yeah and the spirit of god is there bringing order because it's the spirit Mm -hmm. that brings brings the creation through his word he creates that's part of who he does what his role is is to create and to uh, later on in the new old testament you see him um bringing appointing through the prophets Mm. um moses you know that's a name that a lot of people recognize in the old testament he had the holy spirit not all the people in the old testament received the holy spirit like we do today because we just said how do you know when you have the Holy Spirit? It's through Jesus. Well, before Jesus, not everybody. Right, before the cross. Yeah. It was not just a free access to mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit. So he only appointed to certain people in the Old Testament. But he created, he he yeah. appointed, and then he made new creation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that looked differently in the New Testament, but it's the same thing. Yeah. Throughout the scriptures, and then even in today. Yeah, I mean yeah order out of chaos like that's what god does yeah not just with god is not a chaotic god absolutely god of order and so it it applies to the created world Mm -hmm. to uh human beings that's that's the role Mm -hmm. of the holy spirit in our lives in in a summary umbrella kind of way to bring order out of the craziness of our lives yeah when i don't think that holy spirit is just like a force like it's not just like I don't know, like a uh, puffy white cloud. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I used to think of it. Like it's a person. He is a person. Yeah. Which is mind. It hurts my brain. But that's okay. I don't need to understand everything. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. not just a. It's like you said, he's not just a force. Um, mm-hmm. He there There is a, a part of who God is that is represented as the spirit. That's so and cool. You can't separate it from him. That's so cool. So I feel like there's a ton of scripture where you can see the spirit influencing people and empowering people. Yeah. And you see this in scripture, but is it still happening? Oh, 100%. Absolutely it is. Mm-hmm. Um, because the spirit's job even in the in the New Testament throughout of all scripture is to point to Jesus. Um, the experience that you talked about mm-hmm. that you had, yeah, it's you can't unvalidate the experience, but the experience was the purpose of the experience was to point you to Jesus. Yeah. It wasn't for the experience. Right. It wasn't just to be cool. Yeah. And to 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 seek experiences, but it's to run towards Jesus. Um, Titus 
three five. There's a verse. That's not a book of the Bible that you hear about very often. I know, but it's a good one. <laughs> this verse. Okay, says what does this say? It says, He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit. So there you go. You can see the new creation that we just talked about in this mm-hmm. verse. The, the experiences that the Spirit gave to people in the in the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, for sure, continue to this day. Right. Well, and then, like, thinking about in your own life, thinking about, like, okay, so I'm supposed to have the Spirit. How do I know if I have the Holy Spirit? Mm. I think a big one is the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. They're the fruits of the Spirit. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, Faithfulness. gentleness, and self-control. Yes. Like, it's the evidence. Those are the evidence. Mm -hmm. And so if you're seeing those fruits in your life, you have the spirit. You have the spirit. Because that's not possible on our own. Absolutely not. You know, um, I think, so thinking about this idea of new creation, right? Yeah. The spirit, that verse we just read, said he gave us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. How does that play out into our lives? Well, it plays out into my life on days when I am tired, I'm hungry, I'm in a bad mood. Hangry. Yeah, hangry. (laughs) (laughs) Tired, hungry, bad mood. And and Jesus says, serve your husband. (gasps) Go visit your neighbor. Help your friend. Okay, every part of me would go, (laughs) no. (laughs) I don't want to. Yeah. But the spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, says otherwise. And he he gives me the love that I don't have in that yeah. moment or the peace or the patience or whatever it is I need in that moment yeah. to do the thing that he's asking me to do. But I don't have that ability in and of myself. Mm-hmm. And when I'm walking with the spirit mm-hmm. in those moments where my person, like me, wants to rise up then the spirit rises higher and says this is the better way Mm -hmm. this is the non-selfish way this Mm -hmm. is the love way this is the the self-control way whatever yeah i feel like sometimes you have to ask for it too like ask you always have all of the spirit like it's not like a little part ever leaves right but you can always ask for more yeah for to come up and overflow i think i uh as as crazy as it sounds, I think that's a daily thing we have to do. Oh, I agree. And situational. Like, yes. when you're hangry and in a bad mood and the spirit says, go talk to your neighbor. Sometimes that's going to take a... Help me, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Dear Jesus, give me love and peace and patience. Okay? Okay, thanks. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, and you then, can always ask for more. Yeah. that And he promises that he will. I mean... He's not going to leave us high and dry and go, okay, well, figure that out on your own strength. No, that's why we have the spirit. Is yeah. to, and then that's when we become the new creation that he has desired for us to be. Mm-hmm. And then that's when we move from who we are into becoming more more like mm-hmm. Jesus, which is the point of the whole thing. Yeah. To yeah. not become myself and to live into to me. Mm-hmm. But yeah to to leave in to jesus so all right so question for you okay um what does the spirit of god have to do with us today as followers of jesus i think one major thing is like like you said before the appointing of the spirit so like sometimes that may play out in our lives as what we call spiritual gifts Mm -hmm. so your giftings yeah and what are some examples of spiritual gifts so it could be uh that you're really good at teaching or you are creative or you are really good at being hospitable and loving people or administrative administrative yeah uh there's a ton even the ones we haven't mentioned right I think the spirit um, is unlimited in the Uh gifts that he can give us. Uh And 
it's not just recline or boxed into you know certain parameters right which is something i just learned recently natalie just taught a class recently here at church on spiritual gifts and i went into it there's a couple of places in the bible that talk about specific gifts mm-hmm. that the spirit gives us and those are i think everybody has some of those gifts or all of them or whatever but saying that sometimes like what you're good at too is a gift from the lord yeah and so like i'm a creative person i love to create and i never associated that with a gifting from the spirit i thought i mean it was just like something i was good at talent right a talent like i never attributed that to the spirit has given me the gift of creativity to point people to the lord yeah and he can take all of the things like that yeah you know, maybe before you knew Lord, maybe you were still creative. Yeah. Um, but when you c- come into the place where he's in your life, he takes that mm-hmm. um, and turns it for himself. Mm-hmm. And then it's a gift. What's something you see in your life? So I think one of my spiritual gifts um, is, uh, is the top one that comes to my mind is administration. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it's a natural thing. Yeah. For some people, it's like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to try to figure out how to organize that. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I would like to organize your closet. <laughs> Let me at it. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. I don't know. No, we need people like it's you. pretty natural. Yeah. And also supernatural because not everybody has it. Right. You know, so that's one. It mine. sounds like such a simple thing, but you're right. Not everybody has it. So and we need people who have the gifts. We need you. Whatever your gift yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It's all important. So okay, I think. So what are some other things? So besides spiritual gifts, um, we kind of mentioned it already, but the spirit is there to help us grow Mm -hmm. and so that we become more like Jesus. Yeah. We cannot become more like Jesus without the spirit. We will fail every time. And even with the spirit, we're still going to sometimes mess up because it's a process. I think following the spirit, we're never going to do it perfectly. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. But I think the whole point is our, which way are we headed? Like, are we going forward with the spirit? Are we listening to his guidance, direction, leading? Or are we like, eh, I think I got it better. And and that's, is he creating, are we allowing the spirit mm-hmm. to make us into new creations, just like mm-hmm. he promised? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think another re, another part of what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives mm-hmm. is, you, you said it, um, is that when we ask for more of him, Mm-hmm. So we have all of him. Yes. It's not like we have 20% Holy Spirit. And then we, and you don't we, have to share. Like, yeah. It's not like you have to. <laughs> like, <laughs> Holy Spirit, I want all of you today. Natalie does not get 20% of you. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So we have him all the time. Like he's with us always. He's, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's the filling of the Holy Spirit that I'm talking about. It's the. Um, like how much you allow. Yes. So I'm thinking of this verse in the Bible, and I don't know exactly where it's at, but it says, um, do not become drunk with wine, but instead be full of the spirit. So that's not necessarily a verse about drinking. (laughs) I mean, it sounds like it, (laughs) right? but the idea is that if I'm filled with something like, like alcohol, Mm -hmm. for example, it's, it's influencing my decisions because of what's in there, you know, and it's, it's giving me some kind of direction. It's kind of, um, it's swaying me. Yeah. If I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, the same is true. Mm-hmm. He's influencing my life. He is directing me. He is. So when we ask for him to fill us with himself, we can't lose. Like mm-hmm. there's the better choice. And so why would we not want to be full of him every day? And I think it has to be an every day choice. I don't think it's a, well, I pray that prayer once, Lord, for you to fill me with your spirit. I think it's, I think it's an everyday going back to the Lord and saying, oh, fill me sure. today. And, I, and oh, in this moment, I need you to fill mm-hmm. me because I don't have the ability on my own to, to do this in yeah. the way that is the most best way. Yeah. In the way of Jesus. Yeah. So pretend this is the first time I'm hearing about the Holy Spirit and I'm overwhelmed. What do I do? 
Wow, I'm going to just take you off. That's a really good question. <laughs> I'm just going to take you off guard right now. Yeah. And kick your feet out from under you. You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first time you've ever heard, heard of the Holy Spirit. I think you've got to know that he wants to be in your life. Yeah. Um, and he's not going to push himself into your life. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to force himself it's not scary it's not and and he's gonna be a gentleman about it (laughs) (laughs) you know but he wants to be there Mm -hmm. and you don't have to be afraid of that and he will go with you as far as you're willing to go and and Mm -hmm. and challenge you along the way Mm -hmm. you know bring you moments where he's calling to you and saying you know convicting maybe a little bit in moments or yeah. Encouraging, you know, those kinds of things. But I don't think it's a mm-hmm. thing to be afraid of. Mm-hmm. But we should for sure desire his presence in our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. not not be afraid of it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I think another, like, next step sort of thing is um, here at Christ Church, we do what's called Freedom Basics. Yeah. And I feel like that would be a good next step if you want to know more about the Holy Spirit, but you don't really know where to start. Right now, it's only in person, but we're hoping to get it online real soon. And so we'll, I mean, yeah, at least go to our website. Introduction. Yeah, go to our website. Get connected. We have life groups that talk about the Holy Spirit. So I don't know, just a safe place. Oh, for sure. To. To explore. Ask some questions because obviously we needed that mm-hmm. at one point too. Mm-hmm. We still do. <laughs> that's true. I still have. I don't know everything. I don't either. <gasps> this is a. But that's okay. A 50,000 foot view of the Holy Spirit. There's way more. I, I know. I know. Like <laughs> we're giving you like this. Yeah. And there's so much more. There is so much more. Yeah. But that is what we have for you today. Hopefully uh, you got something and if you have questions let us know because we'd love to answer also any questions if you you've got ideas for uh things you want to learn about or hear about yeah uh, put them on in the, the podcast com- let us know yeah put them in the comments because we'll take suggestions absolutely so thank you for being here join us again next tuesday we'll see you later Woo! oh we did it Mara. Woo! this has been another episode of the beyond sunday podcast and don't forget Like, share, and subscribe.